Hello again, I'm Ruth and today I'm going to be talking about the book without which I don't think the romantic comedy genre would exist in the way it does today. You know how they always start with a misunderstanding, making the heroine think that the hero is a douchebag? To be fair, both Lizzie and Darcy have significant character growth and positively influence each other, but I think how it's shown in the romance genre now is more enemies to lovers. Bridgerton certainly wouldn't exist if Jane Austen hadn't been writing way back in the 1800s. I think that the TV series I've seen the most times in my entire life has got to be the 1995 Pride and Prejudice. When I was growing up, my family had it on two video cassettes, and when I was little, I just didn't understand why they were so into these like three hour long movies of red faced people acting weird at dinner parties. However, I was sufficiently intrigued to read the book by 10, and I must say that that was probably too young for me to understand most of the jokes. I cried laughing during the chapter that Mr. Collins proposes, but I remember wanting to bear when Mr. Darcy's letter went on page after page. I've reread it since, and I appreciated it much more the second time. My family have never stopped quoting it to each other, like going, hearts, Mr. Collins, hearts, when we play cards. The way that the actors say their lines is just so iconic. I was so pleased when it made a brief appearance in the Barbie movie. I only watched the 1980 version before doing this video, and I really liked it. Obviously, having seen the 1990 version so many times, it's hard not to think of the way they say it when the same lines are being said in the 1980 version. But there are many lines that the 1990 version doesn't cover from the book. I especially enjoyed getting the voiceover of Lizzie's thoughts because you get a much better sense of how she's basically in love with Mr. Darcy, whereas in the 1995 version, I was trying to work out whether it was just gratitude. I know that there's that bit when they stare at each other lovingly while she's playing the piano that never fails to make me feel uncomfortable. There's a really similar scene in the 2007 international version of War and Peace where Andre falls in love with Natasha as she plays the piano and she's singing the exact same song. The theme from the 1995 version is much more of an earworm with its bouncing sense of urgency inspired by hunting which the composer thought suited a story about women on the hunt for a husband. This contrasts really well with the imagery of sewing and lace it plays to. However, I prefer the cartoons in the 1980 version, a style between 70s and Regency caricatures of a continuous picture foreshadowing the events of the episode. I think the 1980 version of Lizzie's family really is her touchstone. You see how delighted she is when she returns to Longbourn after being at Neverfield. She is shown to play board games with her father to pass the time, so you get a subtle sense that she is his favourite, as well as the more obvious indication shown in the 1995 version, where they give each other looks as Mr Bennet baits Mr Collins into saying more cringy stuff. Mrs Bennet forgives her much more quickly in the 1995 version for not marrying Mr Collins. She doesn't seem to have a core dislike of Lizzie in the same way, but after having a bit of a huff, gets on board with the idea of her marrying Wickham instead. Her younger sisters all come into her room and try in unhelpful ways to comfort her when they tell her the news that Mr Wickham is engaged to Miss King. I think this is quite a different attitude towards her family that Lizzie has as opposed to the 1995 version, where she is obviously quite disillusioned not only with her parents' unhappy marriage, but also with the family as a whole, except Jane. She is much more sarcastic, Sighs, rolls her eyes more, displaying a lot of frustration and anger at having to put up with them all. I think her being played as more contemptuous of most people she meets contributes a lot to the warmth I feel towards the 1980 version. Lizzie in the 1980 version is more good-natured and charming. She seems like she's more willing to give people the benefit of the doubt. As much as this makes me like her more as a person, this means she doesn't need the big realisation that her prejudice of other people is her hubris after reading Darcy's letter as much. I'm not saying I dislike the 1990 version of Lizzie as a person, but more that in the book I really enjoyed reading the reveal that Wickham is a cad and how Lizzie acknowledges to herself that she missed all the red flags with him. She thought she was above the other girls in Meryton who were going gaga over his good looks, and actually she was just the same. It's very human to be influenced in favour of pretty people, but I think Lizzie saw herself as superior and shrewd about people, so it's very satisfying to see her become self-aware about this. Up until the third episode, these series have been paced very similarly. However, the 1995 version has an extra episode and utilises this quite well by ending episode 3 with a proposal scene, so that in episode 4 you get the fallout of what both Darcy and Lizzie are thinking after Lizzie has given her very definite no. You certainly do get longing looks in the 1980 version, but I think there's a lot more passion and sexual tension in the 1995 Pride and Prej. I don't think Colin Firth will ever outlive the legacy of his Darcy, it will probably be etched on his gravestone. 
He definitely plays it as this kind of brooding, sensitive man who just needs someone to look after him. And then obviously there's the famous wet shirt scene. I love how Lizzie even starts to say, I did not expect to see you so, and she mouths, so wet, and then says something else. Something that really fixed the boringly lengthy letter problem for me is that Andrew Davies decided to include montages in his screenplay for the 1995 version. He hasn't just done flashbacks, but exciting scenes to Darcy's voiceover of what actually took place when he and Wickham were at uni together and showing you Wickham grooming Georgiana Darcy. It lets you understand more why Darcy is so overprotective of the people he cares about, having been through this experience. You also get fun extra scenes of Darcy fencing and trying to get over Lizzie, and then in the last episode he even apologises to Bingley for keeping Jane being in London from him. It's quite nice because Bingley has a bit of a go at him, which is a really big thing, because Bingley is so lovely to everyone all of the time. Darcy's kind of morose and rude to Lady Catherine as well, and she chooses to think that he's fond of her, whereas in the 1980 version she keeps asking him questions and then talking before he can reply. She's practically having a conversation with herself, and I was really surprised to realise that it's her younger sister Monica Joan from Call the Midwife. I like how in both versions you see how upper class she is because she's wearing these medieval headdresses and puffed sleeves that were in with people of higher rank during the Regency period. I think the 1995 Jane looks perfect for the role because she has this elegant Grecian profile which was exactly how all the women would have wanted to look back then. That's what all the curly hairstyles and empire line dresses were about. I think it's really interesting that the 1980 version didn't care about Lizzie having fair hair and Jane having dark hair but that was obviously an important part of the auditioning process for the 1995 one because Jennifer Ailey dyed her hair to read for Lizzie so they wouldn't be put off by her having light hair. The 1995 Jane is super timid. It plays into Darcy genuinely mistaking that she isn't that into Bingley because she expresses herself so timidly that I think without already knowing, I wouldn't be sure of her true feelings either. Obviously that still doesn't justify Darcy sticking his nose in and telling Bingley that she definitely doesn't like him. The 1980 is much more expressive about her feelings for Bingley and you get a foundation for their love through the, her words rather than through the words of other people. Mrs. Bennet still really embarrassingly goes on about how they're going to get married in public, though. Jane is also quite shrewd, even noticing that Wickham was rude to Darcy, not the other way around, like Lizzie is insisting. The double wedding at the end of the 1995 version is so cute, like in Princess and the Pauper. You know, save on the expense, the Bennets only need to get all geared up for one wedding. The 1995 Wickham has this amazingly affable and genial voice that really oozes the charm Wickham is described as having in the book. You have to wonder how someone so sleazy gets away with everyone thinking he's wonderful, and it's that he's basically a con man and a womanizer. For a second, I totally thought the 1980 Wickham was Edward Fox, whose wife and daughter played Mrs. Gardner and Georgiana Darcy in the 1995 version, but I looked it up and then it's actually this guy who was voice coach to Princess Diana. He doesn't convey the overly engaging false humility quite as well, and he also doesn't go into as much suspicious detail about his supposedly tragic backstory. Whenever Wickham talks, I always imagine someone playing a violin sadly behind him. The miniature portraits of Wickham and Darcy that the housekeeper shows Lizzie and the gardeners are pretty good in both adaptations. I hate it in films when they're like, oh, it's very like, and you look at the prop knowing what the actors look like, and you're like, no, it's not, but they did a good job with each. I think the final conversation between Lizzie and Wickham, when they're now brother and sister-in-law, has the edge because she totally baits him, saying how Darcy must have been preparing for the wedding in London. I think that the 1980 Charlotte has more spark. Irene Richard went on to play Eleanor Dashwood in Sense and Sensibility, and I think that makes sense because she has the charisma to play a protagonist. Her and Lizzie seem much more in sync, and you get a better sense that they just go to each other's houses and chat, whilst the other is flower arranging or something. There's nothing wrong with the 1995 version, but I think she's very reserved and aloof, and because Lizzie is also quite aloof, their friendship seems much more intellectual than based on feeling similar ways about things. That's probably more accurate to the book, because I think Lizzie feels quite removed from Charlotte when Charlotte gets engaged to Mr Collins, as that is something Lizzie thought Charlotte would never have done. She definitely feels more like the book Charlotte in having no interest in romance, which is good, really, because no one could feel romantic feelings for the smarmy as hell 1995 Mr Collins, except maybe Mary. He's kind of played as if he's too stupid to realise how awful he's being, whereas in the 1980 version, he actually seems quite manipulative when he tries to tell Lizzie 
that he's basically her only option. I always wondered if I had been in that situation whether I would have married Mr Collins in order to save my family, but it turns out that Lizzie was able to marry for love and basically be able to support her entire family for life anyway. It was really interesting to get the actual proposal scene with Mr Collins in the 1980 version, and you get to see the look of regret in Charlotte's face as she sees what life is forcing her to do. Mr Collins really seems like he should go into real estate because he's obsessed with inappropriately inventorying when people, people's houses and how good quality their furniture is. He has his own kind of trumpet horn theme which highlights how bumbling and ridiculous he is. He wears this dumb aquatic life hat that Lady Catherine thinks he should wear when he's near water and it's almost quite sweet because Charlotte passes him the plants as he wears this stupid hat and plants them in the river. They even mention how Charlotte is pregnant by the end of the book. In the 1980 version, Mrs Bennet seems to show displeasure with the spouse she chose as well as Mr Bennet. She says that he's no company when the girls are going away. I think even though she complains a lot about him in the 1995 one, it's always in the moment and overall she'd probably say that she's really happy with her marriage. I love how much she overdoes the hysteria when they're waiting to hear news of Lydia after she's run away with Wickham. Mary's very similar in both versions, singing excruciatingly badly in public and saying obvious things as if they're really intelligent philosophical observations. Apparently in the 1995 version, Mary's actress exaggerated her prowess at the piano in order to get the part, and when she auditioned they were like, oh this is great, we love how you're deliberately playing badly. Kitty and Lydia are both more annoying in the 1980 version than in the 1995 version. With the 1995 version, I always thought that if they'd been more properly looked after, rather than their father neglecting them and letting them be completely influenced by their silly mother, then by Jane and Elizabeth's age they might be fairly sensible. The difference is that they aren't awful people. They actually do seem quite fun to be around. Kitty seems as if she'd be much more like her older sisters if she wasn't always following Lydia's lead all the time. And Lydia herself is actually quite charismatic. It still makes me crack up when you get the scene with Mr Collins coming out to gloat about the family's disgrace and Kitty says that she's not going to sit with him for anyone. So as he's saying these ghastly things like how it would be better if Lydia had died, you see Kitty peering through the window checking if he's gone again. You also get to see Lydia and Wickham in London and the cracks are already showing because Wickham speaks harshly to her when she won't tell him who is at the door, his Mr Darcy. Basically Lydia is a mini Mrs Bennet which is why she's been allowed to run wild because Mrs Bennet is kind of reliving her youth vicariously through her. I've always loved the 1995 Lydia's actress voice and was very upset when they snubbed her to voice Ginger in Chicken Run 2 saying she was too old or something. I enjoyed the musical, especially the songs Bravado, My Sister Jane and My Ministry. I really enjoyed in My Ministry when Wickham is laughably telling Lizzie how much he wanted to be a vicar, and I appreciated the double meaning of the lyric, My Ministry is whom I'm meant to be, with these sort of violated lilts because he's telling a sob story. I love that there's so many adaptations of this book. There's a Bollywood version, a Mormon version, a zombie apocalypse version. May the reign of Jane Austen never end.